then we can have a look to Odyssey. Odyssey is Homer's epic of Odysseus, says a 10 years struggle to return home after the Trojan web. Well, Odysseus battles mystical creatures and faces the wrath of the gods, his wife Penelope, and his son Telemachus, is staff of sweeters vying for Penelope's hand and Ithaca's stone long enough for Odysseus's, Odysseus's to return. The Odyssey ends as Odysseus wins a contest to prove his identity, slaughters the suitors and retakes the throne of Ithaca. So Odysseus was a king of Ithaca. He went to take part in Troy Square that we have learned in uh, the Iliad. And after when a Greek army defeated the Troy Square, after defeating Troy, Odysseus was the king of Ithaca. He wanted to return to Ithaca. And it took 10 years from Troy to Ithaca, the journey of Odysseus. And in this 10 years journey and struggle is the theme or the history of the Odyssey, the epic poem. So the written by Homer from epic poem, genre epic mythology, first published probably around 700 BC. So that we have learned earlier. Setting the sea and the Ithaca, main character, Odysseus, Penelope, Telemachus, Athena or Pallas, Polyphemus or Cyclops, and the king Alcinus, Circe, and Calypso. Major thematic topic, hospitality, loyalty, perseverance, vengeance, appearance versus reality, spiritual growth. Motif, mythology, love, disguise. More major symbol, Leartes, thought, Odysseus's bow, the sea, Ithaca. Movie version, uh, we see movie version of the Odyssey that is in 1997. The Odyssey is an effect of very long poem on a single subject. Some epics were composed in order to be performed from memory. And so they include poetic devices to make them more memorable. And many epics, probably including the Odyssey, were written to be performed to musical accompaniment. The journey of Odysseus from Troy to Ithaca takes 10 years, the same amount of time that Trojan were itself lasted. The extraordinary length of Odysseus's return trip, which should take a matter of weeks, is due to his many antagonistic, including the gods Poseidon, the many mythical creatures he encounters, and Odysseus's open greedy and lazy to men. Odysseus's most memorable quality is not his bravery or strength, though he is brave and strong, but rather his cleverness. In fact, Homer refers to his protagonist throughout the epic as Willy Odysseus. Willy Odysseus. Okay, so this is the story in brief uh, about the editions. Uh, so we see some other instruments. Uh, 
policy. We know that epic is a long narrative poem in an elevated style and that deals with the trial and achievements of a great hero or heroes. In case of Iliad, we see two heroes, Achilles and Hector. Uh, here, uh, that means in every epic hero, there will be a hero or heroes, you know that. The epic celebrates virtues of nationality, military and religious, political and the historical significance. So epic is written on the base of national importance. The person is not important in case of a long poem, that is the epic poem. So the national aspects, military aspects, religious aspects, political aspects, and historical significance might gain significance in case of writing uh, the poem. Epic part. The word epic reflex comes from the Greek epos, originally meaning what, but later oration or song. Like all art, an epic may grow out a limited context, but archives greatness in relation to its universality. It, it's typically emphasized sizes heroic action as well as the struggle between the hero sequels and his human failing or uh, morality. Increasingly, scholars distinguish between two types of epic. The first or the primary epic involves for the modes, legends, and the folktales of a people and is initially developed in an oral tradition of storytelling. Secondary epics, on the other hand, are literary epics. They are written from, from their inception or design to appear as whole stories so we know that one of the epic what we are going to read that is uh for iliad and odyssey they are the primary epic or the oral epic and they are derived from the folk and legendary tradition of a national history regarding the greek and secondary epic we see paradise laws myths and paradise laws and also uh, spencer the fairy fairy queen these are the secondary epic so we, we have dealt with this kind of epic in our in your previous and composed around 700 bc the odyssey is one of the earliest epics it's still in existence and many anyways sets the pattern of the genre neatly fitting the definition of a primary epic that is one that grows out of a oral tradition the hero is a long suffering odysseus king of Ithaca surrounding islands and the hero of the Trojan war. He has been gone 20 years from his homeland and his wife Penelope and his son Telemachus. Tele Telemachus. Odysseus embodies many of the virtues of ancient Greek civilization. The more known is that this epic poem bears on the national day. So, Odysseus embodies several national or characteristics of the Greek civilization. Some pursuits of Greek civilization is presented through the character of Odysseus. And in some ways defines them. He is not, however, without his flaws, we sometimes get him into trouble. So epic hero will be half human and half superhuman. Okay. In case of Achilles, that we have found, that he, he was immortal. But uh, epic hero will be fighting for the interest of their country and uh, for not for their self-interest, not for their own interest. So Odysseus, to Odysseus, we see the Greek tradition and the pursuits of tradition. And sometimes, the Greek civilization's virtue and merits might be presented to the characters of Odysseus. So that's the great job done by the two epic writers, epic writer, um, epic writer Homer. Epics usually open with a statement of, of the subject or an invocation of the muses or muse, 
the nine sister goddesses in Greek mythology, the daughters of the king of gods, Zeus and Mosin uh, for the memory. Saturn uh, muses preside over song and uh, poetry, which are joint in epic. Sometimes muses are assigned to all the liberal arts and sciences. Clio is usually thought as the muse of history. Irapu takes care of lyrical love poetry. Calipo, Calio, Calliope is the muse most often associated with epic poetry. So Zeus had nine, uh, sorry, nine uh, sister goddesses of Greek mythology. They are attributed to the poetic tradition. So the epic is that with the tradition, you know, that in the very initial stage of the epic, that is called invocation to the muses. And we see not an exception in this epic period because these, these are the classical epic, Homer and uh, Homer Indian epics. Having invoked the muse, the epic poet then begins the middle of the tale. And this is called, uh, teachers sometimes use a Latin term in medias res, in the middle of the thing. So the history will start from the middle of the action and then with the help of flashback technique, the history will be told to the audience. Beginning in the middle of the action, the poet then fills the significant prior evidence through the flashback or narration. Odysseus and Clo employ most of the literary and the poetic devices associated with epics, catalogs, Catalogs means catalog of ships. Digression. Digression then means a story related to the main story. A long speech. Long speeches, uh, as you know. Jandis or quest. Various trials. Various trials and tests of the hero. Similis. Metaphor and divine intervention. So in Odyssey, we see almost all the epic tradition, especially the catalog of ships, digression, long species to the divine intervention. In uh, Greek mythology or in Greek period or Greek civilization, early Greek civilization, it is thought that human beings, every activity is done by the intervention of God and goddesses. So epic poem, is not an exception in the whole process of epic tradition and epic poem. We see the intervention of God. Some God will be supporting uh, one side and other God or goddesses which will be supporting the other side. So in Greek mythology or in Greek poem or in epic poem, we can say in different words that it is more than a fight between the human beings but it is more than a fight among the divine gods and goddesses of Greek mythology. So that we see in Odyssey as well, that the direct involvement of Greek gods and goddesses. So although few contemporary authors attempt to compose epics, the influence of the genre and of the Odyssey is extensive. Many cities, Many critics considered James Joyce's Ulysses, which used Odysseus's Latin name Ulysses for the title and places a very fraud non hero in Dublin and to be the most important novel of the 20th century. Other works that students might compare to the Odyssey include Mark Twain. Huckle Body Finn in 1884, G. Day Stellinger, The Catcher in the uh, Rye, 1951, John Cheever's short story, The Swimmer in the Collection, The uh, Brighter and the Golf Widow, and Donald Barthes, uh, Barthim, Barthelms, The Dead Father. So these are the literary tradition that is inspired by the Greek poem Odyssey.
the setting of Ithaca. While it includes recollection of the earlier times, most of the action in the Odyssey takes place in the 10 years following the Trojan War. Historically, was there ever such a war? W A Camps, an introduction to Homer, 1980, preliminary argues impressively that there probably was, but that it was much different from Homer's depiction of Iliad and the collection of the characters in the Odyssey. Archaeological evidence indicates that the war may have taken place around 1220 BC and that the city Homer calls Troy was destroyed by fire. The Odyssey was likely composed about 500 years after this event. Okay, so we see the setting. Actually, the question was that was there a city named Troy? So some historical evidence we find that there was a city in such a there was a war nearly uh, uh, 1202 year, years uh, uh, BC. So this is the historical concern regarding OBC. But Iliad and OBC was written in 700 BC. In the interim, Countless birds and at what over the stories, what you see or hear in Homer is not a depiction of history, but a world created out of lizard folk tales. At least one poet's imagination, a little bits of history. The wanderings of the Odysseus, as his travel adventures are often called, and the take place largely on the reality beyond the own. The setting uh, very widely, Ithaca, on the other hand is the constant for Odysseus and the Homer Odyssey. So, uh, politically, the system of Ithaca is less formal than a city state, but it does provide a structure based on power. Odysseus is not just a great warrior or excellent seaman, although those are important talents. He also is the best carpenter that Ithaca has known the best hunter of wild boar, the finest uh, marksman, and the leading expert on any man husbandry. So this is the, as we see, that Odyssey defines Greek tradition. So we see Odysseus's character is the combination of the Greek virtue and morality. Odysseus can plow the street furrow and mow the largest streets of meadow in a day. In fact, it is his supreme skill, his intelligence, his powers that enable him to maintain his power even after many years absence. As long as he is, he or his reputation can maintain control, Odysseus remains king of Ithaca and surrounding islands. So that is the history regarding Odysseus. And then the power, of course, comes wealth because Ithaca has no quaint money. Wealth is measured by livestock, household furnishings, servants, slaves, traders. Slavery is not only act accepted and encouraged in Homer's world, but slaves are viewed as symbols of wealth and power. Piracy, war, raids on foreign cities are all accepted means of increasing wealth. The first thing that Odysseus does after leaving Troy, for example, is to shack Isma Aras, a stronghold of Siphonus. In addition to plunder, he captures the women. So uh, at Homer's time, actually, in Greek civilization, they had, didn't have coins. So their treasure and the wealth might be apprehended by, by the livestock, by the furnishing, by the servant, by, uh, by the other sorts of things. And also plunder, looting, and attacking other city states was accepted by Greek tradition to increase their wealth. 
social tradition are strong in this community and ironically it is social tradition of this fatality that proves dangerous for uh, Odysseus, Odysseus life Penelope and his son Telemachus. So one thing that was also the Greek civilization uh, famous, that is hospitality. This is also a main theme of this epic, uh, the Odyssey. So in the same way, we see that that hospitality become crucial or problematic in case of Odyssey especially when lots of suitors come and visit Telemachus's house, Odysseus's house, and all of them were thought that Odysseus is in death and they wanted to marry Penelope, Odysseus's wife and Telemachus's mother, and want to be the king of Ithaca. That was the normal. So ironically, the, uh, most of the people of Ithaca were very much hospitable and this hospitality was a good tradition of, of, of Ithaca and the other countries, especially the Greeks. That hospitality ironically became a problem for Ithaca. Finally, the people of Ithaca believes strongly in fate and the rights of the gods to after human life at any time. They hope that virtue will be rewarded, but they accept the vicissitudes of fortune. If an Ithacan stops his toe in the garden, he may say, some gods sent that rock to alter my uh, path. So Odysseus himself is good that if the god choose anything might happen even to a king. So in Greek tradition that was a far belief that everything is done by gods and goddess in their life. So that was a far belief of the Greek tradition. And the king Odysseus Ithaca has gone to Troy for 20 years. The first 10 he spent fine, uh, fighting heroically and victoriously with the Greeks in the Trojan War. And the last 10 he spent trying to get home. From other sources, we know that the goddess Athena arranged for storms to blow the Greeks off course as they attempted to sail home from the war. She was outraged because a Greek warrior had dis uh, desecrated her temple by attempting to rape Cassandra, daughter of the last king of Troy. In that sacred place, Oors, the Greek had not punished the man, although Athena intervenes on Odysseus's behalf repeatedly throughout the epic. Her curse originally causes his wanderings. We might uh, think that actually it might take several weeks to return uh, from Troy to Ithaca, but that uh, several weeks journey actually took 10 years of Odysseus's life. And what it happened? It happened also for the cause of aggrieved Athena. Athena's uh, supporters and Athena's, uh, Athena's uh, Athena's, what should I say? Athena's uh, disciple, Cassandra, Cassandra had been uh, Oh, Priyamir Kona Silo, Bobishot Mani Yes, a uh, daughter of the last king of Troy, that means Priyamir Kona Silo, among Taki, a Greek Joyla Korar Tori, Taki Reap Korar Action Odysseus, Arikjo, Taki Reap Korar Chestakori, 
With Odysseus's gun, all that he has, his kingship, his wealth, his home, his wife, son, is in jeopardy. His wife, Penelope, finds herself surrounded by unwanted suitors because she is the key to the throne and to Odysseus's wealth. Her new husband would, at the very least, have a distinct advantage in the competition for a new king. And uh, her, uh, like her son, Telemachus, Penelope's attacked the power to uh, eject the suitors who have invaded her home and her bent on facing to her many. So in absence of Oedipus's son, Telemachus is referred to as the here apparent and such is constantly intended. The more so as he becomes a man is perceived as a threat by his mother's sister. Telemachus lacks the stature of his uh, lacks the stature of his father, and also he can summon the Athenians on the islands to full assembly. He cannot accomplish his goals, namely to reach his own of the unwanted sisters who have abused a custom of hospitality. Not only does Telemachus lack power to maintain control, but he also has no formal system of laws or courts to support him. Telemachus himself acknowledges that he may at best be ruler only to his own house. This is Telemachus, Oedipus' son, especially when uh, Oedipus has left and after the end of the Troy, Trojan War, Oedipus was supposed to return back to Ithaca. When Oedipus failed to return, they, at that time, the surrounding city uh, states princess, they thought that Oedipus had died and he will not return. And at that time, they planned to capture and uh, the Ithaca captured the Ithaca because, and they wanted to marry Penelope, Oedipus's wife. So their marriage is not was the supreme motive. The motive is that they wanted to be the king of Ithaca and the surrounding islands, and also they wanted to be the owner of the vast wealth left by Oedipus, uh, Odysseus. So this is the situation and Telemachus was Telemachus was uh, Telemachus was young at the time. Um, not Matthew that uh, At the time, most probably he is 21 years old. So Telemachus were to assume the crown without sufficient resources to defend it, which the currently lacks, the risks being deposed, and most likely the killed. If Penelope stalls much longer in selecting a suitor, Ithaca could find itself in civil war. And she and her son may well be among its first victims. If she suited a husband, her son is still a danger unless he is willing to abdicate his claim to the throne. As repentant as marriage seems, it may be necessary for Ithaca and possibly her son's survivor. So there is a pitiable condition that Ithaca. Ithaca would be the next uh, uh, king of 
uh, sorry, tail emitters will be the next king of the cup. However, all the sweaters are very much aggressive. They want to be the king of the cup. They want to marry Penelope. So if Penelope delays in making a husband or choosing a husband, that would be pro problematic for both for uh, both for Telemachus and the queen himself. So in this way, the history moves. And let's see some characters of. So we uh, have learned about Odysseus, the central figure of this epic poem. He employs guile as well as courage to return to Ithaca, defeat the sweaters, and resume his proper place as the king. Penelope's wife of Odysseus, Odysseus, mother of their son, Telemachus. She is a short and faithful in fending of the sweaters. So he, she is very clever and also faithful. Important thing of uh, Penelope. Telemachus, son of Odysseus and Penelope. The prince struggles to gain his own maturity while attempting to deal with the problems of the palace. Leartus, Odysseus's father, the old king, lives humbly and is in solitude on a small hut where he mourns the absence of his son. Once reunited with Odysseus, he is restored to dignity. Antiphia, Odysseus' mother, she dies, grieving her son's long absence and sees him only during his visit to the land of the dead. Eurysia, faithful lord, old nurse to Odysseus as well as Telemachus, she identifies her master as she recognizes an old scar on his leg. Eumenius or uh, Philotius, Odysseus is loyal swineheart, a person who tends pigs and cowherd. They assist him in his return to Ithaca and stand with the king and prince against the suitors. Argos, trained by Odysseus some 20 years before, he discarded old dogs, uh, dying on the dung heap, recognizes master as Odysseus and Unimenus opposes the palace. Antinous and Eurymenus, the two leading sweeters, they differ in their in that Antinous is more physically aggressive, while Eurymenus is smooth. He is a smooth uh, talker. Eupithetes, uh, uh, father of the Antinous. Milanthias or Milantho, Odysseus is disloyal goatheart and an uh, insolent palace maid servant. Agamemnon, king of Mycenae and the commander of the great expedition to the Troy, we know that. Tiresias, the blind seer. Elcinas, the king of Thaesian. Uh, Musica, daughter of Elcinos, Jews, king of God. He is somewhat unpredictable, but usually supports wayfaring suppli uh, suppliants, hospitality, and his daughter Athena in her concern for Odysseus. Athena, somewhat called Pallas Athena or Pallas, she frequently intervenes on Odysseus and Telemachus' fear, often in disguise and sometimes at mentors and the prince and advisor. Polyphemus, Poseidon. Uh, god of the sea, these are the gods and goddess of Greek mythology. Okay. So, a character map, as you see, these are the main characters. Uh, and Now, uh, 
now you will have so let's have the study in brief of policy the introduction as you see that after an invocation to the muse of poetry the epic begins in medias res medias res we have learned that that would be starting at the middle middle of the action odysseus has been gone from ithaca for about 20 years and the first eight years is spent fighting the trojan war and the last 10 trying to get home meanwhile odysseus wife penelope tries to fend off over 100 suitors who have invaded the royal palace seeking her hand in marriage and a chance of ruling ithaca including in great amounts of food and wine at the host expense Telemachus, son of Odysseus and Penelope, uh, Penelope, is just coming of age. He is approximately 21 and is at a loss at, as to one to do about the suitors. Mother and son yearn for, yearn for Odysseus's return. So this is the story of introduction of the epic poem, the Odyssey. And uh, the Odyssey has 24 books. So in short, we will, the story is written over here, we will go over that. The first four books deals with Telemachus' struggle. In fact, Odysseus does not appear in the epic until book five. A secondary plot in the Odyssey is Telemachus' coming of age, his own quest, which his scholars sometimes refer to as the Telameca Sia. Telame the goddess Athena appears to the young prince in disguise and advises him to gather an assembly of the island, island's leaders to protest the invasion of the suitors. So this is Athena, as we have mentioned it earlier in Greek, uh, in epic poem, we see the intervention of God. Athena, first time though we have uh, got the information that Athena was angry and for this reason it took 10 years for Odysseus to return to Ithaca. But here in chapter, uh, in book one to four, we see that Athena came to support Telemachus, Odysseus' son, and he, uh, he uh, advises, she advises uh, Telemachus in order to get rid of the suitors. And um, according to Athena's advice, Telemachus arranges an assembly with the great leaders of Ithaca. Soon after, he is to visit King Nestor of Pylos and the King Menelaus of Sparta, the old comrades of his fathers, to gather from them any new news of any news of Odysseus. So uh, with the advice of Athena, Telemachus went to the oldest leader of Ithaca, that is the King Nestor. And with the uh, advice of King Nestor, Telemachus also went to Menelaus of Sparta, that is Helen's husband. And then the old comrades, this is Menelaus. In the assembly, the two leading suitors, the aggressive Antinous and the smooth talking Eurymachus, confront the prince. They accuse Penel uh, Penelope of delaying too long in her choice of a new husband. So the two suitors, they claim that Penelope is taking much time for choosing, his, choosing her husband. And uh, they became very much angry towards Penelope. Telemachus speaks well, but accompanies little at the assembly because the suitors are form some of the strongest families in the area and are impassioned with Penelope's delay. 
A telemachus secretly sets off Phylos and Sparta, the suitors plot to assassinate him. At Phylos, Telemachus learns little of his father, but is encouraged to visit Sparta, where King Menelaus reports that Odysseus is alive and held captive by the goddess Nymph Calypso. So Telemachus went to uh, Menelaus and Menelaus gave the information to uh, Telemachus that your father is alive and your father is in captivity by a nymph, goddess nymph, that is Calypso. After getting the information, Homer leaves the story of Telemachus as the suitors are about to ambush his ship on his return to Ithaca. At Athena's Arctic, the gods have decided to free Odysseus from Calypso. You can go to uh, visit the dead land. Here you can get some advice. So he also went there. So at Athena's urging, the gods have decided to free Odysseus from Calypso. Hermes and the messenger god delivers the order to Odysseus's captors. Odysseus has spent seven years with the goddess, sleeping with her at night and pining for his home and family during the day. Calypso is a beautiful, a lustful name who wants to marry Odysseus and grants him immortality. And he longs for Penelope and Ithaca. Reluctantly, Calypso sent Odysseus on his, uh, on his way. So Calypso কেন ওডিসিএস কে ধরে রেখেছিল ক্যালিপসো হচ্ছে ওডিসিএস কে বিয়ে করতে চায় এবং ইন রিটার্ন তাকে ইমোরটালিটি দিতে চায় ওডিসিএস কিন্তু ওডিসিএস সব সময় চেয়েছিল সে ইথেকাতে ফিরে যাবে যেখানে তার রানী পেনেলো তার জন্য এতদিন অপেক্ষা করে আছে সো দিস ইজ দা স্টোরি বাট হোয়েন জিউস অর্ডারস দ্যাট ক্যালিপসো ক্যালিপসো ब्लैंडेडन सन ब्लैंडेड पसाइडन सन किंगीन and the fishian civilized and the hospitable people welcome the stranger and encourage him to tell his of his adventures and through through odysseus odysseus narration the reader goes back to 10 years and uh, hears his tale jokon poseidon tar samudrer jahaj dubi ghatalo tokhon she odysseus ekta chore ashroy grohon korlo sheitar naam holo phenicia তার রাজা 
সন্তুষ্ট হয়ে তাদেরকে আশ্রয় দিল এবং সমস্ত কিছুর জন্য এবং এর লিটার ওডিসিয়াস তার গল্প বলা শুরু করলো নোন এজ দা ওয়ান্ডারিংস অফ দা ওডিসিয়াস দা সেকশন ইজ দা মোস্ট फेमस অফ দা ইপিক এট দা এন্ড অফ দা ট্রোজান ওয়ার ওডিসিয়াস এন্ড হিজ মেন সেইল ফাস্ট টু দা ল্যান্ড অফ সিকোনেস দা গ্রিক সাকসিডেড দা রাইট রেডিংস দা সেন্ট্রাল সিটি বাট লিঙ্গার টু লং এন্ড আর routed by a reverse force hoping to stay directly home the fortilla instead encounters a severe storm and brought on by athena and uh, that draws them far of course to the land of the lotus eaters a member of the people so prothomoto jokhon ta greek theke rona shuru kori tokhon prothomei je state ta pore tader kache shekhane holo sikonas दखल कर रक्षा पेल खुब क read this poem shekhane these are not hospitable people but eating the lotus plant removes memory and emotion uh, ambition odysseus is barely able to pull his man away and resumes his journey shekhane lotus it is in the actual text only the 25 lines were dedicated to describe the lotus it is shekhane eshe somosto manush lotus it is er manushra khub beshi akromon hoto na kintu tara ei आग्रह It's actually the cyclops or the cannibalistic people, and one-eyed giant. And a cannibalistic in one hand, and another hand they are one-eyed. And I like to put it here. I'm going to get it up here. The cyclops is uh, the son of the sea god Poseidon. So one of them, Poly uh, Polyphenus, also simply known as Cyclops, traps Odysseus's scouting party in his cave. इधर मुद्दे एक जोन शुकोशले इधर पूरो दाल के তাদের কেভের মধ্যে নিয়ে গেল এবং টু স্কেপ ইট ইজ সেজ ওডিসিয়াস বাই ব্লাইন্ডস দা ওয়ান আইড মনস্টার এন্ড ইনকারিং দা র‍্যাপ রক অফ দা জায়ান্টস फादर পসাইডন সো সেখানে এই কেলি কেনি কেলিবান্ডা ওডিসিয়াস এর অনেক অতি সন্ধাই একজন দুইজন করে पर दिन जो हम सैक्लोपरा तर दो जन संगी के धरते आसे हाँ तर साथ सरि सैक्लोप के हम ओडिसियस 
পলিসিয়াসের নাম জানতে চাই সাইক্লোসের সংজ্ঞা ফেব্রুয়ারি তখন বলে যে মাই নেম ইজ নোবো তখন সেই সময়ে ফিলিপাস সরি পলিসিয়াস তীর দিয়ে হচ্ছে সাইক্লোপসের হচ্ছে চোপ বন্ধ করে দেয় ঠিক আছে যখন অন্ধ করে দেয় তখন সবাই মিলে আবার তাকে আক্রমণ করে আক্রমণ করে এই সেই সাইক্লোপ জানতে চায় যে কে তাকে আহত করেছে তখন এই সাইক্লোপসের লোকেরা বলে যে নোবডি নোবডি তখন সে আর কাউকে মারতে পারে না এবং সেখান থেকে ওডিসে তার দূরদর্শী বলে সেই জায়গা থেকে রক্ষা পায় কিন্তু পাশাপাশি যেটা হয় যে সাইক্লোপসের ফাদার ওসাইডার গড অ্যাংরি উই ডিড ওডিসিয়াস এন্ড হিজ পাট এলোনাস দা ওয়াইন্ড গড ইজ ইনিশিয়ালি আ ফ্রেন্ডলি হোস্ট he captures all adverse winds and backs from uh, backs them from uh, for odysseus who is thus able to sail within as the side side of ithaca unfortunately his men suspect that the back holds treasure and open it while uh, odysseus uh, sleeps the trouble some winds blow the partly back to aodas who wants no more to do with them and speculating that they must be cursed by the gods eonas e hocche ekta wind god she actually odysseus ke help korar jonno somosto batash adverse wind shokti wind gulo ekta bag er moddhe bondhi kore rekhe diyeche e pore odysseus ek shomoy ghumachhe কিন্তু ওডিসিয়াসের সঙ্গীরা মনে করলো যে এই ব্যাগের মধ্যে মনে হয় অনেক সম্পদ আছে সেই জন্য সে ব্যাগটা যেই খুল খুলছে বা খোলার চেষ্টা করেছে আবার তারা মধ্যে পড়ে গেল whom of the beautiful in centres by uh, sarse who turned several of them into pigs ekhane arek jon jeta ekjon amra in centres ke pelam tar naam holo sarsi ei sarsi odysseus er somosto songi der pig banaye dilo with advice from hermes odysseus evenly defeats cyrus and becomes a lover she leaps the spell from his man and aids the groups even to a departure a year later advising odysseus is he must sail to the land of the dead and there he receives various great heroes a visit from his own mother and an important prophecy from the seer tarsius odysseus is as in his journey er pore ekhane jokhon she ডেটল্যান্ডিসিয়াস ফ্রম টায়ারসিয়াস and after getting advice and also he visit uh, from his own mother and an important prophecy from the tarsius after getting everything uh, it is odysseus and his journey really uh, surviving the temptation of the siren song and attack by the six headed monster named skyla odysseus and his crew arrive in the island of the sun god helicos despite helios despite severe warnings not to the man fist on the cattle of the sun god during the odysseus his brief absence zeus is outraged and destroys the ships as the greek departs killing all but odysseus who is washed ashore at calypso island where he stays until released several years তো 
Okay, so that is the end of the story, and 